Putin's invasion of Ukraine has failed spectacularly, as this example shows. President Vladimir Putin of Russia is not going to be happy about Finland joining NATO. This year's 4 April marks the 74th anniversary of the signing of the NATO treaty, making it a significant date. Putin, however, is solely to blame for the largest expansion of the Western alliance in quite some time. Just 30% of Finns wanted to join NATO before Putin invaded Ukraine last year. Since the end of the Cold War, Finland has developed an intricate web of security partnerships, including close cooperation with NATO, participation in the EU's common security and defense policy, and military integration with its neighbor Sweden and the other Nordic partners. Public support for joining NATO, however, skyrocketed overnight to around 80% and has remained stable ever since. Even though a wide variety of parties competed in Sunday's elections in Finland, NATO membership did not come up. So, what's different now? There are essentially two issues. To begin, since the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, Finland's security policy has been predicated on the idea that Russia would recognize the new international borders and state structure. However, Putin has made it clear that all borders that were once part of the Tsarist or Soviet system are open to revision by annexing Crimea in 2014 and now seeking to annex more areas of Ukraine's territory. The Finns are very worried about this because they thought their relationship with Moscow was stable, albeit delicate. Finnish people have learned the hard way that close partnership with NATO does not guarantee an immediate NATO response or protection in light of Putin's invasion of Georgia in 2008, as well as Putin's support for separatists in eastern Ukraine in 2014 and the ongoing war there. Only full membership in NATO, with its accompanying Article 5 collective defense obligation, can achieve this goal. The EU has a solidarity clause and is increasing its cooperation on matters of defense. Only NATO, however, has the forward deployed troops, command structures, and reinforcement plans necessary to put collective defense into practice. When Finland unexpectedly found itself in need of stronger defenses, the only viable option was to join NATO. Joining NATO is a win-win for Finland and the alliance as a whole. The alliance will gain a strong military actor with cutting-edge equipment like artillery, Leopard 2A6 tanks, and soon US F-35 fighter jets, as well as one of the best reserve forces in the alliance. Despite the rest of Europe enjoying the peace dividend after the Cold War, the Finns never stopped taking collective defense seriously due to their proximity to Russia. As Finland assumes the presidency of the North Atlantic Council, the alliance will suddenly have two borders with Russia, significantly increasing its security responsibilities. However, Putin is aware that moving thousands of troops from Ukraine to the Finnish border won't help him win against Kyiv, despite his threats of unspecified retaliation measures. Finland is also not looking to host a large number of NATO troops anytime soon, which could provoke Putin into taking action. NATO and Helsinki's celebration of Finland's membership will be tinged with disappointment because they had hoped Sweden would join at the same time. The ratification of Sweden's membership in the EU has been stalled by Turkey and Hungary. However, Finland's membership is likely to be more strategically significant to NATO in the short term because it will increase the Allies' access to the Baltic Sea and their ability to reinforce the Baltic states and Poland. The outcome of the Turkish elections on May 14 will also prompt Turkey to take action toward Sweden raising hopes in Stockholm that the country will be invited to join NATO at the upcoming summit in Vilnius in July. Stockholm will be surrounded by friendly nations for the time being, all of which are members of NATO. Jamie Shea is a fellow with Chatham House's International Security Program. He used to work for NATO and is now a professor at the University of Exeter, where he teaches courses on strategy and security.